Welcome to Himmels for our Maundy Thursday service, to everyone who is gathered here in our sanctuary, and to those who are viewing online. I just want to invite everyone to participate in the um, ensuing events for this Holy Weekend of Holy Week. Tomorrow, the Community Good Friday service will be at St. Paul's Urban at 7 o'clock, and it will be live streamed as well on the um, Koinonia Line Mountain YouTube channel. Saturday will be our traditional Easter egg hunt here in the Himmels Grove at two o'clock. And on Easter, we will ha traditionally have our two services, Easter sunrise service at seven instead of 6.30 this year, followed by the service here in the sanctuary at 8.30. Uh, there will not be an Easter breakfast. Hopefully, uh, all of you will want to join us for, um, for the remaining events, and uh, we're hoping to um, get this holy weekend off to kind of an inspiring and meaningful beginning here tonight. And as part of the service, we do have communion, and I would just remind those who are viewing online that you should have your bread or wafer and your juice or wine with you. Uh, nearby, so it can be consecrated as, as I consecrate the elements that are here in the sanctuary. And then after everyone here has communed, I will instruct you when to receive your bread and your wine, and will commune myself along with you at that time. I would invite everyone to spend a few moments in preparation for worship by listening to our prelude. Would all who are able please stand for our evening's confession. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, 
let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of our holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, 
we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, and verses 11 through 14. It's found in the Old Testament of the Pew Bible on page 74. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Give these instructions to the whole community of Israel. On the tenth day of this month, each man must choose either a lamb or a young goat for his household. If his family is too small to eat a whole animal, he and his next door neighbor may share an animal in proportion to the number of people and the amount that each person can eat. You are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel with your sandals on your feet and your walking stick in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honor me, the Lord. On that night, I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorpost will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. You must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. Celebrate it for all time to come. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 116, verses 1, 2, and 12 through 19 as printed in the bulletin and on the screen. I love the Lord because he hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens, he listens to me every time, time I call, call to him. him. What can I offer the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will bring a wine offering, offering to the Lord to thank him for saving me. In the assembly of all his people, I will give him what I have promised. How painful it is to the Lord when one of his people dies. I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have saved me from death. My prayer to you. In the assembly of all your people in the sanctuary of temple in Jerusalem, I will give you what I have promised. Praise the Lord.
The second lesson is written in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. It's found in the New Testament of the Pew Bible on page 231. For I received from the Lord the teaching that I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please stand once more, if you are able, for the reading of tonight's gospel from John chapter 13. We begin with verse 1 through 17, and then we move to verses 31b through 35. It was now the day before the feast of Passover. Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those who were his own in the world, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already decided that Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So Jesus rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not know now what I am doing, but you will know later. Peter declared, You will never at any time wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, O oh Lord, do not wash only my feet then, Wash my hands and head, too. Jesus said, Whoever has taken a bath is completely clean and does not have to wash himself except for his feet. All of you are clean, all except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, All of you except one are clean. After he had washed their feet, Jesus put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I had just done to you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so because I am. I am your Lord and teacher, and I have just washed your feet. You then should wash each other's feet. I have set an example for you so that you will do just what I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No slave is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the one who sent him. Now you know this truth. How happy you will be if you put it into practice. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God himself will reveal the glory of the Son of Man, and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jews. You cannot go where I am going. 
A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then all will know that you are my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord on this evening. Please be seated. Well, a thoughtful reading of that gospel poses a question for all of us. What would we do with our time if we knew we had only a few hours of life remaining to us? Would we spend that time trying to wrap up a few loose ends from our work? Would we double check to make sure all of the papers our heirs will need are in good order and in readily accessible places? Would we go out maybe for one last favorite meal at our favorite place? Or would we gather the people we love around us and spend our last hours at home with them? Jesus knew what he wanted to do. As our gospel opens, he is aware that his remaining hours are numbered. And as the gospel of John tells the account of this last night with his disciples, he chooses to be with them and to wash their feet. He turns the tables on social expectations which would be for the disciples to wash his feet as their leader. He is providing an example for them of the sort of community he wishes for them to build with one another after he is gone. In his last hours, then, he has chosen to be with the persons for whom he cared, perhaps cared more than any others in the world, certainly with divine love, but likely also with the brotherly love of a human being. But on this last night, he has primarily chosen to wrap up a few loose ends from his work. For as Jesus knows, his mission will soon be ending his disciples will be the ones to carry it forward, and he wanted to leave them with some concrete guidance on this, his last night with them. That something he leaves them with is what we call the law of love. Now, he has already taught them that the traditional law can be summarized by simply saying, we are to love God and to love others. And now he adds this new commandment that they are to love one another. The love they are to share with one another is that same kind of love he has just expressed toward them by washing their feet. He who was the master took on the role of a servant in the foot washing and just so the community, the disciples, will share is to be characterized by loving service. There will be no place in that community for pride of position nor for the put down of those who may occupy lower places on the community's social ladder. There is to be respect and regard for everyone. Now the gospel which we read tonight is the one which we read every year on this day, Maundy Thursday. There is a three-year cycle of readings in the lectionary, but the reading for tonight on each of those three years is exactly the same one. And that's because it's not a passage to just dust off and consider every now and then. This really is Jesus' instruction for his own disciples, but also for all of the generations of Christians who have followed them. The timeline of the church stretches through the ages and reaches all the way to us, right here, right now. Jesus speaks to us tonight, giving us this new commandment to love one another. 
you and I are to have the same regard for each other as Jesus had for his disciples. As we are God's people in this place, our community here is to be characterized by loving service to one another. We are to love God, yes, we are to love others, yes, and now tonight Jesus tells us that we are to love each other. I think each of those commands in its own way challenges us, For, but perhaps there are times when the most difficult one of all is this new commandment that Jesus offers us tonight for us to love each other. It may be easier for us as human beings to love and serve one another in the abstract. For example, when we support a mission in Africa, well, we certainly are loving and serving all of those persons who will receive our, our service or our donation, whatever we're, we're doing. But it's just so much easier, really, when we don't have to get to know those persons on the receiving end of our service. It's much more challenging to love and serve others with whom we are in relationship. As we know, relationships bring the potential for misjudgment and misunderstanding. A lot of times, we are most demanding with the persons for whom we care the most deeply. We can accept the faults of others who are casual acquaintances or even strangers to us more readily than we can accept the faults of those whom we love. But on this night, Jesus calls us to put aside our judgments and to see one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. On this night, Jesus calls us to love and serve each other. That is why some churches do foot washing on this night. Now, we're not going to have foot washing here, but it's still a night for us to cloak ourselves with humility and to look upon one another as our brothers and sisters. It is a night to see through the eyes of faith and to affirm our common bond as Christians. It is a night to let go of all the little things that bother us about others, especially those whom we are closest to. And it is a night to remember that judgment of greater sin, greater than those little things, well, that belongs to God, not us. It is a night to remind ourselves that we all stand in need of forgiveness, which is available to us through Jesus. And it is a night to remember how the events of that last week of Jesus' life now move forward towards our redemption. Jesus shares his last meal with his disciples. He washes their feet, as John tells us. Then they go to the garden. May we continue journeying with Jesus as he moves towards his cross. Amen.
walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we confess the faith that does bring to each of us the presence of Christ and his peace through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, united by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray on this holy night for the needs of the world. O oh God, you call we, your people, to hand on what we have received from you. From one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your creation, O oh God, provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O oh God. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in places of tyranny and grant peace in places of war. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we may love others as Jesus has loved us. Bless the ministries of all who serve throughout the church. Hear us, O oh God. Hear these and all of our prayers on this night, those that we speak and those that are unspoken in our hearts. In the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Uh -huh. 
blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the eternal mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 